Scorpio, 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 Scorpio. This is Dana with Taurus Star Tarot, and we are about to do a general reading for your sun sign today. If you have Scorpio anywhere in your chart, sun, moon, rising, Venus, Neptune, Pluto, Mercury, it doesn't matter. If you have Scorpio anywhere in your chart, this reading may very well resonate with you, or it may not. Make sure you cross watch your other signs, your sun sign today scorpio is how you receive information your moon sign is how you feel it's how you process your information and your ascending sign is how you spit that information back out into the world so watch those watch your ascending sign and your uh moon sign <laughs> um you might want to throw your venus sign in there too because venus is about how you give and receive love you can cross watch those for your people as well and um, get a better, more comprehensive view of the events that are unfolding in your lives. What else? Oh, yes, that's right. This goes without saying that this is a general reading. So it may or may not resonate with you. If it does not resonate with you and you leave a comment in the box below that says, this reading doesn't resonate with me, I will delete it so everybody else on the board doesn't think you're a complete moron, okay? This is a general reading for the sign of Scorpio. All right, what else? Oh yes, if you would like a personal reading, just like this, just for you, just for your situation, 45 minutes to an hour on the phone with me, the cards, 40 bucks, we'll hook it up at TaurusStarTarot.com. I've gotten a lot of feedback about my personal readings and people are saying that they would pay double or triple what I charge for my personal readings. But you know what? For YouTube subscribers, my readings are 40 bucks because I have been very wealthy and I have been very poor. Right now, I am somewhere in the middle and I am very content to be exactly where I am because this is where I'm supposed to be right now. That being said, I understand what it means to be seeking guidance and not have the money or the budget to shell out a hundred bucks for a reading, 150. Sometimes they're like 200 bucks. The local psychic here in my town, she charges $250 an hour for her readings. And to me, that's just like insane. I mean, my regular readings are a lot more expensive than my YouTube readings. They're the exact same readings, but because you're obviously on YouTube seeking some kind of guidance, some kind of confirmation, watching free readings on YouTube instead of actually paying for a reading, that tells me that you probably don't have a hundred bucks to 200 bucks to drop on a reading. So if you need help and guidance, I'm your girl. 40 bucks will hook you up all the time, day in, day out for my YouTube subscribers. Okay. It's my way of paying it forward and giving it back. All right, so here we go. Let's start this bad boy of a reading for you, Scorpio, and see what the cards have to say today. This is kind of, sort of, the same undertone that we've had for a minute now. Scorpio um, energy, somehow, some way, is really, really <laughs> stuck on reuniting and reconciling with somebody from their past and they have been for a good minute now. Um, I'm hoping that this reading is the last reading about being stuck on reconciling with somebody from your past because uh, we just need to move on, Scorps. Make the decision, push forward and come what may, okay? Now let's talk about this. So you enter into this reading with the star card. This is beautiful. This is a card about hope, faith, purpose, and renewal in your life. Topped off by the Three of Cups, which is a card of joy. Joy, celebration, friendship, just feeling really, really good about things, right? You're feeling really good about things because up until this point, it has been a struggle. It's been a struggle for you. This whole thing about reconciling and reuniting with somebody from your past, I mean, it has been like a huge struggle for you. But with the Queen of Swords, you are making a decision. You're making a decision in regards to commitment about a unified love relationship, okay? Now I'm going to back up just a second because I'm going to read this in a neutral kind of way where you can put this 
anywhere that it needs to go in your life okay now it's a love relationship because we've been talking about love relationships for the past few readings with Scorpio about reconciling with somebody from your past but I am going to read this reading in a very neutral way so if you are not involved in a love relationship you can still apply the information and the wisdom that's coming from this reading to your life so back up you enter into this reading hope faith purpose renewal joyous right joyous because the struggle has been real for you you are making a decision about commitment in your life in regards to the two of cups in regards to um, unified love partnerships or relationships okay this is also a card about rectifying an imbalance in a relationship as well okay the princess of wands comes in and tells me that you are just filled with excitement filled with excitement like off the hook excited the princess of wands is all about enthusiasm exploration discovery and a free spirit this goes right back to that ten of wands right the struggle is real you've made a decision about commitment in a relationship or a partnership princess of wands off the hook excited about it prince of cups about being somebody's knight in shining armor or about an opportunity that presents itself to be your knight in shining armor okay yeah prince of swords comes in this card is the page i'm sorry it's the knight of swords this is about action oriented communication okay it's also i want to put out here a card about a disregard for consequences Okay, on the flip side. See, I don't read reversals. All of my cards, when I shuffle and when I lay them out, I put them all in the upright because I, as the reader, have the prerogative whether to, what definition I'm going to put on the card. Each and every one of these cards has two definitions. One is in the upright, one is in the reverse, right? Based on the cards around it, I have the prerogative to discern what definition, what meaning goes to the card, okay? So just because this Prince of Swords is not in reverse does not mean that it could not mean that you have a disregard for consequences. Because what I'm seeing with the Ace of Swords being mental clarity following this card is that not so much that it's a disregard for consequences like you know fuck it all this is what i'm doing i don't care who it hurts not like that a disregard for consequences i think for you scorpio in this reading means that you have come to terms with what people think what people say what people expect of you what your social conformities are i think that you have come to terms with all of the things that have held you back from this reconciliation or this reuniting with someone or something from your past because you have finally come to terms with what it is that makes you happy and a disregard for consequences being you don't care what other people think anymore you just don't care you don't care what other people think anymore just don't care right so following that is the ace of swords like i said absolute mental power mental victory breakthroughs and mental clarity about the direction you're going to take with this decision that you made back here with the queen of swords in regards to commitment in regards to a relationship or a partnership absolute mental clarity a personal truth the three of swords comes in now if you remember some of our past readings there was heartbreak somebody somehow some way left somebody out in the cold and there was a bunch of heartbreak going on I mean like for four readings in a row it's been just like heartbreak right so this three of swords tells me with this mental clarity right there that you have come to terms with the sorrow 
the grief, the heartbreak, and you are releasing the pain. You're giving forgiveness where forgiveness is due, and you're having some optimism about the future of this relationship. Seven of Cups comes in on top of it and talks to us about choices, right? Choices. You are choosing to come to terms with the pain that was that was in this relationship that you've had with somebody from your past. You're coming to terms. You are choosing to come to terms with the pain, right? The heartbreak. The hermit comes in and says, you've been sitting down with this decision-making process here for a good minute, doing some soul searching, some introspection, getting a handle on the way that you feel. The high priestess, the high priestess and the hermit, you know, that's a good place to be. It's a really good place to be. The high priestess is you sitting down with spirit, your intuition, your subconscious mind, seeking wisdom, guidance, and um, um, direction in your life what comes out of this sit down with the high priestess and the sit down with the hermit together at the same time right you got both of them one on the left one on the right and you're going back and forth right and they're they're helping you through this whole thing right here they're helping you through it what is the result of this meeting this executive meeting with the high priestess and the hermit is the wheel bro sis you have a brand new beginning on the horizon for you. This card is all about good luck, karma, life cycles, and a turning point in your destiny. One life cycle is ending, a new life cycle is beginning. If you watch some of my other videos, I go on the tangent about the Wheel of Fortune, right? The tangent <laughs> about the Wheel of Fortune. We just can't do this. We can move to Timbuktu, dye our hair, change our name, and, and lose 50 pounds but you still can't change your own life cycle. The universe is the one who allows you to, to transition into a new life cycle. Not only a new life cycle, but a freaking turning point in your destiny, Scorp, a turning point in your destiny. You are being released from a karmic cycle and allowed to begin a new cycle because apparently you've learned what you need to learn. I think for a particular Scorpio out there, don't know who, and it's not going to be everybody, but I think for a particular Scorpio out there, the lesson that you learned during this is to, is to not care what other people think, to not care about living up to other people's expectations, to do what it is that you want to do, do what it is that makes you happy, and screw what everybody else thinks. Not every scorp, okay? Your lesson is your lesson. You know what that is, but that just, that it's, I, I do this because the, it's a weird thing, but the, the messages come up off the table. It's, it's a weird thing. I'll explain that sometime. So anyway, a turning point in your destiny, followed by the nine of pentacles, a sense of self-sufficiency, a sense of gratitude, and a culmination to it all. Justice comes in and says that there has been truth, law, fairness applied to the situation. This justice card is directly related to the Wheel of Fortune because there's, there's truth and fairness in your mental, in your life, right? This justice card is simply you turning over a sense of, of justice in your life, fairness, right? And truth. I think truth more than anything to yourself. We open this next section of the reading with the Nine of Wands. This Nine of Wands is all about, I think, your hesitancy, okay? It's about being defensive and it's about being hesitant because of the nine of swords, because whatever that, where is it? Where's that? Where is it? Where is that three of swords? Because, where is it? Oh, there it is. 
because of this pain in the past that you have tried to get a handle on. Somebody hurt you, Scorpio. Don't know how, don't know why. But you know, a lot of times people hurt other people unintentionally. And I'm not saying that's what happened with you. All I'm saying is that there's a lot of reasons why relationships can bring pain, okay? There's a lot of reasons why. But with a Scorpio, when a Scorpio is hurt, y'all come back with a vengeance with that stinger. You, you do. You come back with a vengeance with that stinger, right? Because, I mean, think about a Scorpio. Think about it. A scorpion, a scorpion is a little guy, right? Not much bigger than this little candle right there, right? He's a little guy. I mean, I lived in Texas for most of my adult life. I've had my go-rounds with scorpions, okay? Scorpions are not very big. Now, yeah, sometimes you can get those genetically engineered, gigantic, huge scorpions, but I'm talking about just like regular old scorpions, right? Even the huge ones are still super vulnerable because they're small. It doesn't mean that they're, that they're um, defenseless, but they're small, right? And when a Scorpio senses danger, it does one of two things. It either takes off into the crevices and it hides and it waits for safety to come back out again. Or it gets pissed off and it raises that stinger and that little son of a bitch will chase you. A scorpion will chase you. It is not afraid of a big grown man or a gigantic horse or a cow. It's not afraid. That little thing will chase you. And you better run because if it stings you, ah, oh, it's over. It's over. That's why the, the card of Scorpio is death. I, and I know I'm going off on a tangent here. I'm sorry, guys. But that's why the card of Scorpio is death. Do you, do you, do you know that? Do you all know that? That is... Um, when a Scorpio stings you, not you, God forbid you, when a Scorpio stings something, what it's doing is literally injecting venom, poison, into its victim that literally die, that literally liquefies its insides, all of its insides, organs, muscles, the whole thing. It liquefies its victim. And then when it dies, of course, the Scorpio goes back over to it and it sticks its little fangs in it and it sucks, sucks out the, 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 the juices. That's how a Scorpio eats. That's why death is the card of Scorpio. It's an ending, a change and a transformation because that's what a Scorpio does. It will end your life. It will change you from the inside out and it will transition you into something completely different. Ah, lesson for the day, right? But that's why the Scorpio is the card of death, okay? So back to my point. The Scorpio, um, you were hurt. Somebody hurt you. Somehow, some way, somebody hurt you. All of your readings previous to this to attest to that. Somebody hurt you. So there you are. Even though you've made this decision right here to move forward, to put it all behind you, to let go and move forward, you still have residual defensiveness and you still have residual um, anxiety, right? Because it's hard for you to forget when somebody hurts you. I hope that all came together because I forgot what I started off with in the first place. So these cards are talking about your residual uh, memories of what has happened to you, right? The alchemist comes in. This card, yeah, it's about manifestation. Sure, it is. But it's also about resourcefulness, power, and inspired action. This card for you in this reading is about you taking inspired action. To, to act on the decision that you made right there about commitment with another person, okay? The world is what comes in next. Look, you have, you have the wheel and the world in one reading. This is a card about life cycles ending and new life cycles beginning. This is a card about integration, accomplishment, and completion. 
it's about travel too, but I don't think that that applies to you right here. So you have integrated all of this, right? You have integrated it, which has allowed you to complete a life cycle because integration means that we, that we bring it all together and we mix it up into who we are and what we know about life, right? And you can apply that to your life going forward. This is the lesson learned, right? This is a life cycle ending and a new life cycle beginning. That's the completion aspect of it. Accomplishment is you going through these lessons and accomplishing what the universe has put before you. Okay? New life cycle beginning. Seven of Wands comes in. This is a card about... Eh, it's, it's about being challenged and guarded, okay? Being challenged and guarded, followed by the two of swords, with indecision. You've been challenged and guarded uh, and, and in an energy of indecision for a long time about reuniting or reconciling with someone or something from your past. The Nine of Cups comes in and says, you're done with that though. You're done with that because you want happiness and satisfaction in your life. You want happiness and satisfaction in your life. And the Fool card comes in and says that you are going to take a new journey. You're going to have a new beginning and a new journey, right? And actually, I don't know if the Temperance card was before that or after that. I just kind of messed them up. Hold on, let me think about this. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter which way they go. Okay, so you're, you're on the brink of a new beginning and a new journey in your life with temperance coming in and saying, you know this is the purpose for your life. You know that this new life cycle is the purpose for your life. If we wanted to do it this way, comfort, happiness, satisfaction, purpose for your life, new beginning, and a new journey. You, you know that this world card, that this whole turning over here is a turning point in your destiny. This reuniting and reconciling with this person from your past. Ten of Swords comes in and says that there is an ending to the strife and the conflict that you've had before, the defensiveness, the hesitancy, the indecision. There's an ending to it. And now you are going to recuperate and regenerate. What are you going to what are you going to recuperate and regenerate? Well, there's a transition that's happening for you into the Ace of Wands. Inspiration. An inspired, powerful, creative new beginning in your life. And there is your card, the death card, the card of Scorpio, right? This is an ending, a change, and a transformation. Ending, change, or transformation. Into happiness. With the King of Cups, because you have come to terms with the way that you feel. You've come to terms with the way that you feel about the pain, and you've come to terms with the way that you feel about this Six of Cups. You've come to terms with the conflict that you had about um, maybe what other people were thinking or feeling about the situation. Whatever it is, you've come to terms with the way that you feel. There was or is a tower moment in your future. So we have death and tower, right? So there's an ending, a change, or a transformation going to happen in your life because you know what makes you happy now. There's the King of Cups reiterating happiness and, and feels, right? The, I mean, this is the King of Love, for God's sakes, right? So you, you understand, you're clear about the way that you feel now. This Tower moment comes in and talks to us about... Um, either sudden change, an upheaval, chaos in your life, or an epiphany, a revelation, an awakening. I can't tell you what this tower moment is. This would be the subject matter of a personal reading. 
Um, because if, even if I tried to do clarifying cards for this tower card, it's different for everybody, right? So there is a tower moment that comes in your life that results in the three of wands. This tower moment removes obstacles to your long-term goals and helps you to begin to prepare and have foresight for, for planning for what is coming down the road, right? Remember, new journey and a new beginning right here. This is going to give you an understanding of, of, of what is coming, something that you've been waiting on for, for a good minute now. I mean, you've been waiting on this for a good minute. Four of Swords says that this tower moment is going to allow you to rest and recuperate from all of these mental and emotional processes that you've gone through right here and find balance and stability in your life. Allow you to plan for your future with the Two of Wands, to make progress and decisions about how you're going to move forward in your life. Princess of Pentacles comes in and says that there is um, a brand new beginning. Brand new beginning. This is the page of Pentacles. This is about the manifestation of a new beginning. And then we have the devil, right? And that threw me off because what originally was, was the devil strength and the Prince of Pentacles, right? But me being me, I need to know what that devil card is. So the clarification for this devil card is the four of wands, which is celebration, harmony in your life, in your home, in your relationship. It's also about transition. Ten of Pentacles, transition into a much more solid and stable future with the Six of Cups, somebody from your past. Strength comes in and says that um, this relationship, you are entering into this relationship very strong, strong, solid, and, and trusting yourself and your intuition. The Prince of Pentacles comes on top of that and says you are going to begin to plan your life with this Six of Cups reconciliation or reunion right here. Now what does this have to do with the devil? This devil, you know, the devil gets a bad rap. People see the devil and they're automatically going, ah, oh, toxicity, toxic, toxic. This devil Number one is the card of Capricorn. It may mean something, it may not. But I'm bringing that up because Capricorns get a bad rap because their card is the devil card, right? Um, but the devil is human nature, okay? It's human nature. It stands for attachments, addictions, restrictions, your shadow self, sexuality, and releasing limiting beliefs. This card right here in your reading is about you releasing limiting beliefs about this person or this situationship from your past. R exactly what I talked about up here, right? Releasing limiting beliefs. There's a lot of reasons. <sighs> releasing limiting beliefs, right? So that's what this, that's what this is for you. You are releasing limiting beliefs. You're being allowed to start a new cycle in your life because you are releasing limiting beliefs. Limiting means you can't grow. It limits your personal growth. You are releasing those limiting beliefs. You are transitioning into a more solid and stable foundation in your life because of reuniting and reconciling with this Six of Cups person, with this, with this person from your past or situation from your past, okay? If it's not a relationship for you. But we have Six of Cups twice in this reading. Strength comes in and says this relationship has the potential to be strong. You, Scorpio, feel strong about this relationship and you're trusting 
yourself. You're trusting your decisions. And the Prince of Pentacles comes in and says that you are now beginning to plan your future. And you can move forward out of this stagnancy that you have been in for so long, tossing around this Six of Cups thing that you have going on right here, right? Yeah, the Six of Pentacles, giving and receiving and sharing with another. Anything else? Tarot, can we give any guidance or, um, guidance or um, advice for Scorpio in the future? Any advidance? Advidance. <laughs> it's my new word, advidance. <laughs> Any advice or guidance for Scorpio in the future? What does Scorpio need to know? Okay. Whoa. What does Scorpio need to know? Ouch. What does Scorpio need to know? Let's see what these are. I dropped them on the floor. Oh, look. Excitement. Well, let's do it this way. Mental clarity, personal truth leads you to the page of wands, exciting, passionate messages to a lover in a love relationship. Anything else? Anything else? Anything, 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 anything? Well, there you go, Scorpio, my friend. That is your reading. And uh, I do hope that it resonated. I hope that it meant something to you. If you would like a personal reading from me, 40 bucks will hook you up at torstartero.com. Look what I just picked up off the floor. The Ten of Cups, my friend. The Ten of Cups. That is awesome. Harmony, happiness, and values alignment in your life and in your relationships. This is beautiful, Scorp. All right. Well, there you go. That is your reading. I do hope that um, it meant something to you. Okay. Namaste, my friends. If you have a minute and you would like to stick around, I am going to do a public service announcement about ads on YouTube. It's a little bit informative, a little bit educational, might be something that you never knew before. So if you'd like to watch, just hang tight because here we go. Hi YouTube, it's Dana with Taurus Star Tarot and this is a public service announcement about ads on YouTube videos. When you see ads on YouTube videos, it means that YouTube has monetized that channel. When I first started this channel, I had no idea that you could get paid for doing this. Then I got an email from YouTube that said that they would pay me to allow ads on my videos and I was like, well, hell yeah. When a creator reaches a certain amount of views and subscribers, YouTube will allow you to monetize your channel. The creator of that video gets paid on average between 10 and 25 cents for every three second ad that you see. So instead of getting irritated with the ads, just reset your mind frame to understand that in exchange for getting free tarot card readings or information or entertainment or whatever it is that you're watching on YouTube, the creator of that video is getting paid approximately 10 to 25 cents by YouTube for every ad that you see or every ad that you skip, right? So know that for your three seconds of time until you can skip the ad, that's the exchange for free information or entertainment. If there are not ads on the videos that you watch, either the channel is not eligible for monetization or the video contains previously copyrighted material. Some creators don't monetize because they use their channel to create income in other ways, such as selling products or services. I don't know about other creators, but it takes me about two hours to put up a single video from prep to publication. That's about 24 hours for all 12 zodiac signs. So getting a small payout from YouTube is actually really nice. So adjust your time, adjust your time, adjust your mindset to understand that when you see these videos, and even though they're irritating because it interrupts the middle of everything, I know I watch YouTube all the time for all kinds of different things, and it can be irritating. But now that I understand what the purpose of the ads is, I'm more than happy to wait the three seconds to be able to skip the video because I know that that creator is getting some kind of return for their efforts, okay? All right, well, love and light and peace to you all. Namaste.